few seconds to let people tune in. All right, everyone. Hello. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're here live at the Aquarium of the Pacific with Godzilla and Aquarius Angelina. Hello, Angelina. Hi, guys. Um, and today we are taking your questions live here on camera. So if you have any questions, drop them in the comments. I'll relay them to Aquarius Angelina here live. Um, but in the meantime, you can see we have Godzilla here. Angelina, can you tell us a little bit about him? All right, this is Godzilla. He is a giant Pacific octopus. They are the largest species of octopus. Um, this is actually the first male octopus I've ever worked with. All the other ones that I've worked with since I've been a, a GPO Aquarius, as we fully call giant Pacific octopus for short. Um, they've all been female. So he is a male. The way we can tell he's a male is going to be his third arm on his right, um, which is his right is on this side. Um, so if you count the arms, one, two, three, third arm on the right is um, his boy arm, his hectopodilus. Um, that arm does not have suction cups all the way down um, at the tip of his arm. That's really the only way to tell the difference between a male and a female. Males do tend to get a little bit larger than females. Currently, he weighs about 17 pounds. He is due um, for me to weigh him. Um, the way I do that is I'll put him in a laundry basket and then put him on a scale and get a weight on him. Um, his name is kind of funny because we named him Godzilla, um, but he was actually the smallest giant Pacific <laughs> octopus that I've ever gotten to work with. Um, when he came in, he was weighing about, about two pounds, so he was very, very small. That's a big name to live up to. Yes. But he's getting there. I mean, since since um, he's been here on the exhibit, I know I've seen him grow quite a bit. Yes. Um, can you show us or point to where his mouth is, which he's showing so up to he us? He is Perfect. showing it yeah. for us. So that's his mouth right in there. Um, octopuses have beaks, uh, just like birds have beaks. Uh, it's made out of the same stuff as your um, like fingernails. It's like uh, mm -hmm. chitinous or keratin. Um, but his beak is right up. <laughs> now right he's shy of that. <laughs> um, so most cool. species are actually venomous, so if they bite you, their saliva would seep into you, and that's where their venom is kept. Of course, a giant Pacific octopus, their um, their venom is mild uh, to humans, but the blue ring octopus, which is found in Australia, um, can actually be fatally venomous. However, for anyone who's worried about getting bit by an octopus, it's very likely to not happen because... Uh, octopus's first line of defense is going to be to first camouflage itself. Uh, you'll be very lucky if you even see one out in the wild. Mm -hmm. um, their second line of defense would be to ink and swim away. So if that were to happen, you wouldn't want to continue pursuing that octopus and putting it in your pocket because that's how you're going to get bit. And he has been um, putting his suction cups all over you. Does it hurt? Yes. Do you... No, it doesn't hurt. Um, he's choosing to taste me right now. They <laughs> taste with their suction cups. Um, if I tasted bad, I did food prep this morning, so I probably taste um, delicious. Pretty good, yeah. <laughs> um, but he, he's tasting me right now, and um, if I had touched something that he didn't like or one of his like not favorite foods, he'd probably unstick to me and retract his arm. So he's completely controlling um, sticking to me right, yummy now. right now. Um, so we've seen him kind of change colors while he's been up here. I think right now he just went a little white. There he goes. That's so <laughs> cool. How is he able to do that? So octopuses have chromatophores um, that they use to change their skin color um, as well as the texture of their skin. Now this octopus isn't going to suddenly turn like bright green. Um, the giant Pacific octopus color range will range from white to um, a dark red, deep purple. Uh, when you're scuba diving, if you were to paint your fingernails red and go scuba diving really deep, your fingernail polish wouldn't look red anymore. It would look black or purple. Um, so That's fascinating. just by being red, this octopus is already camouflaging itself um, to not be seen, but it'll change the color, the texture, uh, make itself look spiky if it's by spiky rocks, make itself look smooth if it's on a smooth surface. Uh, they can make themselves look like algae and sway the same way that the algae is swaying. Um, and they'll be solid colors as well as modeled colors to help them camouflage. That's so cool. We can kind of get a good uh, look at his eye here. Um, his eye looks a little different than other animals. Can you kind of tell us about what we're what we're seeing here? So their eye is actually really similar to ours in the way that they see, um, but it did evolve slightly differently. Um, but if you see that black part, that part is the part that's letting light in. Um, it's very small, has an unusual shape, looks very different to us, but that's going to be their pupil and 
um, that's how much light they're letting in right now. That's so cool. Um, Sue is asking, aren't they super smart? I read that they're very interactive. They are very smart. I don't know if you guys got to see when we opened this enclosure, but we have barn doors um, to keep the octopus <laughs> locked in. He's shooting us because we aren't we aren't feeding him fast enough. <laughs> he's ready. He's ready for breakfast or brunch at this point. <laughs> um, so we do provide them with a variety of enrichment, uh, pretty much daily, uh, just to keep their minds working, uh, just like. All the kids right now are doing all their schoolwork yeah. at home. Um, he's getting schoolwork as well <laughs> in the form of puzzles and boxes and jars and different ways to open his food. We also change things around in the exhibit uh, so it looks different. Um, sometimes we'll put live algae in. Right now we have artificial algae in. Um, just different things for him to touch, um, taste, textures, everything to keep their mind active. But That's we do keep them locked in. Um, just to make sure that they don't they don't make an escape. Yeah, definitely. Um, Steven, who is in kindergarten, and Veronica want to know what do they eat and if they eat any meat. So they eat a lot of seafood. They will eat uh, fish, shrimp, squid, clam. Today, our items on the menu are, which if he doesn't try to steal it from us, <laughs> today we have crab. Yum. Um, and then we have a fish called a sardine. Yum. So this is what... <laughs> what we're gonna feed our octopus today. Very cool. Um, Johnny, who is eight years old, wants to know how many brains does an octopus have and if they have ears? So technically an octopus has one brain, um, but each arm works independently. Um, so even though there's only one brain inside their mantle, which is right in here, right behind their eyes, each arm will work separately. So it's kind of like they almost have nine brains the one that's in their head and then the one that controls each of their arms and i heard you say arms um these aren't tentacles no these are arms um even though some scientists believe they use two of their arms as legs but we're not going to get into that right <laughs> now uh, we do call them arms squid um, which are cousins of the octopus they have eight arms and two tentacles that they use for feeding mm -hmm. very cool um, what's the typical weight of an, an adult giant Pacific octopus? Does it kind of depend? Um, they can get to be up to 100, 110 pounds wow. full grown. Wow. So he's got a lot more growing to do. He yeah. is very large right now, but he's only about 17 pounds. Um, on average, though, they're about, they'll weigh around 30 to 40 pounds. Very cool. But max size is about 110. Wow. Um, is it true that they breathe through their skin? They can breathe through their skin, and they can wow. also breathe through their gills. So um, and their cool. gills are going to be located on each side of the head. Um, not sure if you noticed, but the octopus, um, it has one siphon um, that it shot us with water with earlier. Yeah, you saw it a couple minutes um, ago. The siphon has now moved to this side of its head on the right side. So I did not know that. They can move it side to side? They can move their siphon from side to side. So this would come in handy um, if an octopus had to make oh, a there quick, we go. quick escape. Right on my pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Good morning. Or if it had to aim its ink at somebody, it would aim its ink um, at its target. Yeah. So, so it can move its siphon back and forth, or if it had to pick a quick direction to um, swim in, it would move that siphon around. So I saw a question come in, um, why isn't Godzilla currently shooting ink at us? Uh, the octopus uh, only shoots ink if it's uh, threatened or scared. Mm -hmm. uh, the octopus knows that I am the person that feeds him. Uh, so that's why the octopus is all over me, grabbing my <laughs> legs and everything right now. So he associates these sessions with feeding time. Very and so cool. he's definitely not threatened. He is coming up to say hello, getting a little bit of exercise. And you're getting a little exercise. <laughs> I'm getting a little exercise. Um, do all octopuses have ink? I'm not sure. Yeah. I think so. Mm -hmm. I'm sure there's one exception to the rule. There's always an exception to the rule. <laughs> <laughs> um, Zia, who is eight years old, wants to know if they have scales or wrinkles. Um, it would be more wrinkles. So they don't have any scales like a fish. They're an invertebrate, so they have no bones inside of their body. But on their skin, um, if you were to touch them like I'm touching them right now, they're just very, very slimy. So that's their skin, their tissue. Um, and then they also have muscle, which is really, really strong. Their arms look like they have bones in them, but their arms are very solid. Um, with layers and layers of muscle. Very, very cool. Um, how strong is their beak? Uh, their beak is not as strong as their suction cups. Mm -hmm. um, it would hurt probably if you got bit by an octopus. Yeah, we don't want that. 
<laughs> Definitely not. That's why we're staying at the ends of his arms, yep. nowhere near his mouth. Um, but their beak can go through the the crab. Oh yeah, but that's got to be pretty strong. Their suction that. cups are so strong that they'll, um, when he's ready to eat, he'll pull that um, top part of the crab off, and then they'll just eat the meat that's inside. Yeah. Um, how many parts do they have? Octopus have three hearts. Aww. More to love. Perfect for Valentine's Day. <laughs> and eight arms to hug you with. How <laughs> cool. Um, oh, somebody had asked if they have ears. So they don't yes. have ears like we have ears. Um, but they have, they can, it's believed, scientists believe that they can hear um, the vibrations in the water. Very cool. Addison, who is eight, wants to know. <laughs> <laughs> right, Addison, you guys? <laughs> Good morning. Hello, hello. Um, Addison, you might have to ask your question again because I got completely distracted. <laughs> Please send us your question again. Um, are they always this friendly? He seems like he's hanging out with us. So he chose to come up today. If he wasn't um, hungry or if he wasn't in the mood to interact with us, he probably would have stayed in his corner, which is in the, uh, if you're looking at the front of the new exhibit, he's in the top left-hand corner. Almost every single day, that's where he rests. Mm -hmm. Octopus are solitary animals, and they aren't very active. They spend <laughs> a lot of their day just resting. Um, so if he was tired... Sorry, I lost you guys there for a second. Um, let's see. I think some people are just tuning in. Um, oh, Addison, you're back. Thank you so much. How many suction cups do they have on each arm? They can have up to about 250 suction cups per arm. Very cool. On eight arms, you guys will have to do that math real quick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Julia, who is eight, wants to know what his name is. I think we've got some people who are just uh, tuning in. This is Godzilla, our giant Pacific octopus. Very cool. And we are in our northern Pacific gallery here at the Aquarium of the Pacific in Long Beach, California. Um, Alana, who is nine, wants to know if octopuses have blood. They do have blood. And the crazy thing about their blood is it's blue. Um, they have blue blood that's copper Royalty. based, yeah. similar to horseshoe crabs. Very cool. Okay, I'm giving him his crab because he's oh, been very awesome. good for us. So he's not going to eat it here right in front of us. Yeah, but he might hold on to it. You guys can keep commenting your questions below while we at, watch um, Godzilla here eat his crab. He's changing colors. That's so cool. Do you guys see that? How he's changing colors right there? Um, someone asked uh, if he could change his skin color, and we are seeing it happen. Um, and they put their age too, which is 47. So it just goes to show that no matter how old you are, you can still have questions about octopuses because they are so awesome. Um, We're talking, trying to learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah. Nine year old um, wants to know how old Godzilla is. Nem so Nemaya, I think. We're not 100% sure how old Godzilla is, but we estimate he's around three years old. Um, uh, they have, octopus in general, have very short lifespans, so they only live to be about five years old for the giant stone octopus. But we think he's about three based on his size. Dustin wants to know, do octopuses lay eggs? They do. Um, this is a boy, so he will not be laying eggs. Um, but the females do lay eggs, hundreds of thousands of eggs that are super teeny tiny. They're about the size of a grain of rice when they lay their eggs. And they are the greatest moms ever. Um, octopus females will take care of their um, eggs and keep them safe and hidden and clean um, up until they hatch. Once they hatch, though, like a lot of ocean animals, they're on their own. They become plankton in the water column and um hope we hope for the best <laughs> <laughs> very cool um eliana wants to know what the gestation period for an octopus is uh, for a giant pacific octopus it'll be about um about seven months to a year very cool um, some species are shorter uh, if it's tropical species they'll be much quicker scarlet and sydney want to know um are the white things sticky yes by the octopus's choice, not by mine. <laughs> These are their suction cups. And they're sticky because she's sucking on to me. <laughs> See? Yep, okay. right on you. And you said earlier that um, he can actually taste you with those suction cups, he right? He can taste me. You guys might hear the sound. It kind of sounds like bubble wrap um, when I pull the octopus yeah. off. <laughs> if the octopus didn't like that, um, he wouldn't continue to stick to me. 
Um, do we give our octopuses here at the aquarium puzzle style enrichment? We do. We have um, a boat that the octopus will sink to get the food. We have jars that the octopus has to figure out to open. Uh, this one has had a hard time with the jar and opening <laughs> it, so it's still a really great enrichment tool. We're learning. Um, five-year-old Cora wants to know if they lose an arm, will it grow back? Sometimes. Uh, if they're really young, the arm will grow back. If they're a little bit older, their arm may or may not grow back, or may start to grow back. Wow. Um, how oh, long look does at it... him. He's smuggling his there food he away. Goes. How long does it take him usually to eat an entire crab? Uh, he's going to be working on that, and he actually took a second crab while we were <laughs> looking, um, and a fish, a sardine. He took all three pieces of food. Um, he's going to be working on that probably for the next couple hours. Wow. Enjoy, Godzilla. Um, going through your guys' questions right now. Eight-year-old Artie wants to know if an octopus inks, if this octopus can ink, um, which we talked about a little bit. This this octopus can ink, um, but he doesn't. <laughs> um, going through your comments here. I think How? that's a good sign that we're doing our job well because he's right? not scared. Uh, <laughs> octopus inking is a sign of um, that it's like frightened. Um, does his skin have like a slime coating? It does have a slime coating. It's I'm actually um, covered in slime right now. <laughs> uh, another cool thing too, uh, when an octopus grows. Uh, they'll shed their suction discs as they get bigger. Um, so sometimes if you walk by this exhibit when we're open, it'll look like it's snowing inside the exhibit, or you'll see little things floating around that look like little contact lenses. Um, those are actually the suction discs as they grow, and those are slimy too. Very cool. Um, how do they respond to petting and stroking? Well, as you, if you guys were watching just a few seconds ago, Pretty well, right? I mean, at yes. least Godzilla here. I'm gonna say every octopus is different, um, but we've been handling this one um, since he was two two pounds, <laughs> um, so he is very used to that. But as you can see, he was done with our session today, so and he stole three <laughs> or two extra pieces of food, <laughs> and so he made a run for it yep. um, to enjoy his meal. If you guys can't see him, he is going to point right there. Um, Cassandra wants to know how fast can they swim? How fast can they swim? I'm not really sure. Fast enough to get away from a predator, <laughs> but I don't have like a number, like miles per hour. Um, they usually are not known for swimming. Um, they're known more for jetting away mm -hmm. uh, just quickly when they have to. Because they're pretty um, opportunistic predators. Is that, would that be? Yeah, the they'll have their it? little cave and then they'll come out of their cave and they'll go looking for food, and then they usually return to the same cave as long as the bigger, stronger octopus didn't kick them out <laughs> if they were out in the wild. Um, Julia wants to know, what is Godzilla's favorite food? So, I am still trying to figure that out. I think it is a toss-up between uh, squid, which yes, that is his cousin, uh, mackerel, and crab. Those three seem to be a favorite. Um, the octopus, um, Godzilla, doesn't really seem to like uh, clam very much, so we still offer it for a variety in its diet, um, but usually if he's offered something else, he'll drop the clam, which is fine in here because then that gives the opportunity for the sea stars to come over and eat it, or we can feed it <laughs> out to one of the anemones if he chooses not to eat that food for the day. Very cool. Um, Camden, who is 12, wants to know how small of a space can they squeeze through? Uh, uh, they can fit through any hole um, that their beak can fit through. That's the only hard part of their body. So if a, a giant Pacific octopus weighs 100 pounds, but their beak is like the size of an OK sign, they can fit through any hole that's the size of that OK sign. Very cool. Um, Tim, who is 51, wants to know, I love that you guys are all putting your ages. That makes me very happy. Um, wants to know how many times a day he's fed. He is fed one time a day. Um, this animal is a cold water animal so a lot of the animals in the northern gallery um, are fed several times um, a week. We offer him food almost every day but he probably only eats right now about three to four times a week. Very cool. Uh, if you go to our tropical gallery where we have squid and that's something I think you can watch on the live or we have the octopus in there right the octopus, now. Yeah. We had some squid in there. Those were eating like six to eight times a day. I mean, they were eating <laughs> It's a very, it really very big depends. difference between tropical animals and uh, cold animals, uh, cold water animals. This exhibit is 
currently 48 degrees, Ooh. so it's the coldest animal, or coldest exhibit at the Aquarium <laughs> in the Pacific. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, which, yeah, I can definitely attest to that as he uh, sprayed it with some water a little <laughs> bit earlier. Um, all right, everybody, since Godzilla is now back in his corner over there, we are going to wrap things up. Thank you so much, Angelina, for talking Thank to us today. Thank you for tuning in. It was awesome talking to you all, and if you have any comments we didn't get to, we'll reply um, later today. Thank you so much. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.